Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is my Coleman lamp, camping lamp or storm lamp or petrol lamp or whatever you want to call it. And these guys here are cream bottles, cream gas bottles. I find them on the street in Manchester because some individuals believe that uh, getting high from nitrous oxide is the thing to do. And so they started doing it in bulk instead of the little, there used to be little capsules that were about the size of your thumb, cream chargers. And uh, they've moved on to these kind of half liter, one liter bottles. They're normally steel. I'll get a steel one. They're normally steel and they look like this, but they've started making aluminium ones recently. Well, maybe they always made them. These steel ones are really quite heavy because they're a pressure, they're a pressure canister. So they have to be quite heavy, quite strong. But the aluminium ones are formed out of a single piece and they're relatively light compared to the steel ones. And I thought that's an ideal thing to make a petrol bottle for camping. Probably heavier than the ones you'd get from Coleman or whoever, but uh, let's have a go. So they come with these things, a little brass valve like that. As you can see from my brass treasure chest over here, and as you can see from my brass treasure chest over here in with the plugs, there's about 10 of them. And there's long thread and short thread and different designs, but what I think I'm gonna do today, because this is a bizarre thread, it's like a gas thread or some other fine thread. I'm going to tap it out with my tap and die set, put in a 10 or a 12, whatever it'll take, and then just put a nut in or a bolt and screw in the end and a rubber washer. And that should seal it up for petrol so I don't have to bring a five litre jerry can with me because I don't think I'm going to need very much. You can see the thread. So let's put it in the vise and just see if we can tap it. I don't know where I got this set. It's not a particularly good one. And that's the one we've got to work with today. M10 might be perfect. Oh, I've got a thread there. What's that? It's three eighths by 27. Really? That seems to be correct. Where has that tap come from? That's fitting in there beautifully. Three eighths by 27. I might even have a screw for this, if that's the case. I can see from here it's 1 8 by 27. So it's 1 8 national pipe thread. So that makes sense. What would that be? I think it might be, I might be going down a wild goose chase here. I think that might be the size for pipe thread on electrical fittings. And so gas fittings, because apparently gas fitters were the people who originally did lighting and then some of them moved across to electric and brought the threads with them so i'll show you what i mean so this is the kind of fitting you would have inside a lamp uh, holding the top and the bottom together perhaps let's just see yeah that'll thread in <laughs> that thread's in okay up to a point and i'd say it's got a tapered thread for that because it's a gas fitting um i'm not sure what to do here because this thing Oh, it's got a bit of stuff. It's got a bit of a crimp on it there. It's, pretty, it's got a crimp on both ends. A little bit of something. It could be where I use the spanner to get it off or pliers to get it off. Oh, that's just bizarre to have found the right tap because that's a bizarre size. It just happens to be the tail end of this set. Quite loose. So I don't know what to do here now. One option is to weld up the end of this really what I want, what I thought I would do is have something like a rubber washer and just a big M10 screw on it. So if there's a rubber washer on top with an M10 screw, that's, hmm, that's good to know that I have it. Not very helpful. I'll go in and see if I have something similar in a screw form and if not then I'll tap it out with the M10. I don't appear to have anything other than this, so I'm going to go ahead with an M10. Let's see what comes of it. I'm not going in straight there, am I? The other thing I have to contend with is the swarf will fall downwards inside. That's just the way it is. To rinse it out or something, I guess. This 
is M10. I could board out to M12, but it's kind of irrelevant, really. And if I make a mess of it, I don't need the bottle. It was for scrap anyways. I want to melt it down in my aluminium melting forge. It was very easy. Let's have a look at what the thread looks like, because it might, it might need an M12 in reality. Looks a bit... It looks, it looks like it'll hold, like it's not going to be under any pressure or anything. Let's get a M10. One of the joys of hoarding is that you wind up in this situation where you've got a selection of things that aren't the correct one. But you can usually find something. <laughs> you, can, you can usually find something. That's M8, so it's too small. I need a short M10. The issue with these drawers is if you pull them out too far and you're not holding them on the sides, they'll fall on the floor. So, care is required. That looks like M10 there, but a bit long. Again, quite long. A bit better. <clears throat> there are other drawers. Let's keep going. There shouldn't be any M10s up here. Some nuts. Okay, uh, there's some over here. M10 by 20, well that's very easy. Okay, I'm not going to get any shorter than that in this workshop. Let's try that. I think with a rubber washer on it, that's going to be pretty good. Bit of swarf coming out there. So I'll give it a little rinse out with petrol before I do anything with it. I mean, a long time ago in the supermarket, I bought these guys. A selection of rubber washers, some of which have perished. If we could find one that would sit on top like that, perhaps the red one. The red one would sit on top as well. I could use both. Uh, I need to bore that out with a punch. Now, where's my punch set? So some hole punches. And they have sizes that I don't recognize because they're imperial and oval punch. Um, three eighths is, well, three eighths is 10 mil, isn't it? So that might be, might be about right, actually. Okay. Too big, really. What's this size? Three eighths, ten mil as well. So tidy up the bench a bit, Owen. Need a hammer, and so over here. centered but uh, not bad either. I think that would do nicely you know. I don't know how petrol would react to that rubber but um, I don't know if it really matters because I plan on keeping it somewhere safe. It's the wrong size spanner. <laughs> That'll do okay, you know. I feel like I haven't made something like this in a long time, and the making in this was pretty slim. But that'll hold, you know, and that'll do quite nicely. So, a petrol can, camping petrol can from, from waste that I found on the street, and uh, some new parts. What would you call that? 20 pence if you bought it in a shop? I don't know what they cost. I think in reality, I have as much chance of finding that on the street nowadays as anything else if you keep your eyes down. An M10 screw. Wonderful. I'll rinse that out with a drop of petrol or maybe white spirits or something like that and uh, put a bit of fuel in it for camping for my lamp. Questions or comments, leave them below. 
Um, the reason, one of the things about this is that I have a feeling these things, if they're for fuel, cost 20 or 30 quid. I know you see aluminium bottles that are lighter duty than this for drinking water, uh, which I have myself, but uh, I don't think they're rated for fuel. Uh, not that this is any rating for anything, but it's pretty thick wall aluminium, so I'm happy enough with it for petrol. Right, questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later. It looks like filling really is the only issue with this 10 mil size hole, uh, but I have a funnel, so I've rinsed it out with my dirty washing petrol. I'm going to give it a little, little slug of this now to... Give it a clean rinse before I put anything in it. Let's bring Petra in myself. So the nozzle's not on correctly. So the funnel is not ideal, as you can see. I suspect that the uh, professional ones have a wide mouth so you can get a petrol pump hose into them. Oh, it's good pressure coming out of there. Let me shake it. What was that like 30 or 50 mil, milliliters? Got one happy child outside, not mine. in at all when I hold it I can feel the cold petrol in my hand. Now there's a distinct smell of petrol in the atmosphere here <laughs> everywhere. Couple of other funnels. There's a big fat one that will obviously not do. NSA. I don't know what that's for. Maybe that was for breastfeeding something once upon a time, but I don't know. It's a specific shape. And about this little one that was for filling oil lamps, which is what this is, an oil lamp. Maybe I should have a funnel in a funnel, or is that just tempting trouble? Um, the other thing I discovered, my Coleman funnel. It's in a bag over here. It actually fits. It's for the flask, but it's too big for this unit here but it's got an angled spout and it has a filter within so if there was any remaining snots or shards of metal it's not the end of the world because that will pick them up before they go into the mechanism of the pump now just dispensing into this this is ideal but uh that big spout is not I wonder could i just pour it out of the jug it's like i'm trying to make my life difficult here, isn't it? Do it this way, I can see what I'm doing, but it's going to spill down the handle there, is it? If I loop a little bit of wire into here or something to let air in, that might help. The reason I don't really mind this is because this is a job I don't anticipate doing much, very often, ever again. as much work to get the petrol into the bottle as there was to put the thread in the in the neck. It's kind of a good thing that petrol is so cheap at the moment really, isn't it? I'll put that dirty petrol aside. Working in a tidy workspace like this is really the way to go. If you're still watching this video, Tell me why. <laughs> give me an old, give me an old thumbs up, please. I'll take it if it's going.
kind of an opportunity here to make a funnel that would be adequate for this. So this isn't really going where I want it to go. The other option is to fill it with a syringe, shot by shot. That's a bit of a nightmare as well. The syringe is seized. That would probably be the fastest way. You'd have to get that into here to do it. Perseverance, come on. If you haven't seen this before, the trick of turning the bottle upside down, if that makes sense, or turning the bottle on its side, it does actually work quite well. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but there's some really neat fumes fizzing off this uh, fuel transfer process. I think we're winning now. I think I've got it not dripping. Uh, if you don't know, the reason for that wire is to let the air out. That's what was happening. Otherwise, it'll gurgle like it did a bit before. Because the air that's in the bottle is being displaced by the petrol has to escape somehow. Right, I'm going to call it at that. I'll get a shake off and let's see if it's waterproof or petrol proof. The other thing I just realized I could have used was an O-ring in there. Obviously I didn't use an O-ring. Seems okay so far. I'll leave it upside down for a minute there and I'll put a bit of fuel into my into my lamp. got this lamp at least 10 years ago and uh, it was in a cardboard box and I made a new box out of wood for it which is here this box with a little drawer in the bottom to hold mantles and whatnot I made that in this workshop when it was a bit more like a hovel before I put the new roof on it and uh, that's all good. Pressure in here. Yeah. This could be full of fuel, but if it is full of fuel, it's at least 10, 10 years old. Uh, I had it going, so we know it works. So I'm not too worried about that. Now, uh, look at the design of this. That is rock solid there. No issue. So how could I tell how much fuel is in it even? Uh, put in a shot, a shot and see. for another. I don't want to leak it out because make a mess. I have no idea how long these will last. Like will they burn overnight or what? There's no dipstick. There's no fuel gauge on it which would, would be a help. This is E10 petrol. I don't know how good this is for. Right, that's too much. Don't want this. That's too much. That's how much that is. So it is now full as well. That's good. that down. Give that a wipe off. It wasn't it didn't actually spill very much, so that's good. I'll let that drip in here because it needs to it doesn't need to I guess but I'd like the petrol to evaporate off it before I pack it up again. Meanwhile that's that's not leaked so I don't think it will. 
Better write petrol on it somehow. Get a pen. Good thing about petrol is, as soon as I use this and wipe it, the letters will come off. Good. Now, that was more than I thought it would be. Questions or comments, leave them below. Thumbs up and subscribe, and you know what? Thanks for watching. See you later.